we're going to start this assignment first by thinking about shapes and lines that we want to do on our paper. Now we're just using a standard drawing paper and a yellow pencil. And I also have some little stencils here that are just for reference and to use for making my shapes and, um, and also for doing straight edges as well for my lines. So I'm going to start with my shapes. We have to have at least nine shapes in my piece here. So I'm just going to actually use this. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I actually just really like these shapes here. It's almost kind of like this fan shape. So I'm just using this as kind of a guide or stencil in this case. There's my first shape. There's number one. And you don't have to press super hard. I'm pressing a little harder on my paper than I normally would, but I just wanted it to show up on the video. And then maybe I'm going to do that similar shape over here on this side. So nine shapes, and you can freehand draw these as well if you wish to. Might just do a circle over here. Actually, maybe I'll do a circle and then with this shape here. And feel free to overlap shapes as well. So when we're talking about shapes, you can do organic shapes or geometric shapes. These are mainly geometric shapes. So those are shapes that are a little more inspired by man-made stuff. Um, squares, <laughs> I throw my pencil, triangles, um, circles. Those are generally going to be your geometric shapes. Now, other shapes that are more organic might be a shape like this. If I do some kind of shape like this, this is what we call an organic shape. They tend to be shapes that are inspired by nature. So like a leaf shape or a cloud shape. But it's very important that in this work, we're not trying to do any symbols. So I'm not trying to make a cloud. It's just kind of a cloud shape right now. Um, same thing like if I did a leaf shape coming out of the side here, it might kind of look like a leaf, but I'm not actually drawing a leaf. I'm just kind of doing a ger gen general leaf shape. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six shapes so far. Some overlapping is happening. And I can actually keep going all the way over this. I'm going to go into that shape. Same thing with this one. I'm going to actually continue it down that way. So it's actually kind of intersecting. I think that's going to be a little more interesting. I can also have shapes that go off the side. So maybe I'm going to do kind of like a half moon shape. I kind of like that idea. Or a crescent moon. How about that? Like it's kind of coming off the side. So there's kind of this crescent moon. I might adjust that a little bit, make this a little thicker. I could do a better job. There. The colored pencil is going to cover that up anyway. So there's kind of this crescent moon shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need two more. Maybe I'll do another circle. Actually, let's do a bigger circle. I have this nice stencil here. Let's do a bigger circle in the corner here. There's that. And then maybe I'll do another circle somewhere else. I kind of feel like I need something down here. Maybe I'll have this one go off the page a little bit. This still counts as a shape. Basically, a shape is an enclosed space. Okay. So there's nine shapes. At this point, you can do more shapes. So looking at it, you know, does it look like it needs something? Over here, it kind of looks plain. I think I might do something different here. I might actually, just to kind of repeat this shape, I might do a similar one, just a little smaller. There are so many different shapes out there. So think about triangles, hexagons, uh, trapezoids pentagons, stars would count as a shape. Um, just remember that it shouldn't be a shape that's super recognizable, so it shouldn't be like a happy face. A happy face would be too recognizable. It's not going to be non-objective then. So no happy faces um, or anything like that. I think I'll do maybe a little triangle in the corner here. So I'm going to have the triangle look like it's kind of going off the page. We're just trying to create an interesting composition with some things going on, lots of movement happening. I'd say that's pretty good for my shapes. Now I need to add some lines, and I need to add at least five lines. Now these lines can be straight lines, they can be wavy lines or zigzag lines, um, they could be curved lines. So I'm going to do some straight lines first. This is just going to be used to kind of bisect some of these areas. So I'm going to kind of just go right in this line here. We're just going to do a straight line going this way. So it might seem kind of strange, and you can feel free to kind of adjust. Like looking at this, this kind of looks off, so I'm just going to kind of adjust that so it matches up with the line a little better. Okay, there's one line. And I could do a shorter line. Maybe I'll do a shorter straight line going from this side to this side. 
It's going to seem kind of strange at first, but once we start adding color to this, it's going to look a little more interesting. And then maybe I'll do a couple wavy lines. I'm going to do two of them side by side. So there's four lines. Looking this way, I think I could do kind of a curved line going off the side there. I don't know if I like that actually. I'm going to erase that. Something about that just doesn't seem right. I might have it go off this side. Oh yeah, I like that better. So feel free to make adjustments. All right, so there is five lines. I could keep going or just stop there. I might just do one more straight line this way. Hmm. Actually, I don't like that one either. I'm going to erase that. This is very spontaneous. I'm going to go a little bit lower. Right about there. There, that's better. This is really intended to just break up your space. So breaking it up into smaller pieces doesn't necessarily make it more difficult or anything. Um, it's just going to make it a more interesting piece. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, and six lines. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven shapes, I believe. If I didn't double count them. But that looks pretty good. So again, pay attention. See if you want to add anything else. I might even add just a small circle in here. I'm not even going to trace it. I'm just going to go for it. It's very donut-like. Just to add a little more visual interest. And then you're going to start adding your color. Now you need to consider your color choices. What kind of colors are you going to use? Are you going to be using a certain color scheme? Are you going to be using warm colors? Which are colors like these colors here. We've got a stack here. Warm colors. Okay, yellows, oranges, reds. Or are you going to be doing cool colors, which are your purples, your blues, and your greens? Or are you going to be doing neutral tones, like your browns and your blacks, your grays? Or <laughs> are you going to be doing a combination? Are you going to be doing maybe a cool color, a warm color, and a neutral? Or maybe you're going to be doing mostly cool colors with a couple uh, you know, accents of warm or neutral colors. So you decide the color scheme. You can have as many colors as you want. If you want to go full rainbow, go for it. Just know that oftentimes um, if you're going for a certain feeling in your work, if you want it to feel a certain way, you'll want to choose the colors for that feeling. So if I want this to be very active and very energetic, I want to use really bright, colorful colors, but also um, warm colors. If I want it to be a little more calming and soothing, I might use more cool colors that are a little more subdued. subdued. Or maybe I want it to have a cool color background and then use warm colors to make my shape stand out. So really think about it before you start going, going, to, going crazy. I'm actually going to start with the color Mulberry. That's my favorite color out of this Prismacolor set. And it looks like this, and I'm gonna make sure it's uh, actually sharpened. And I'm gonna start wherever I feel like. I think I'll start in this section here. So I'm just gonna pay attention to this section. Now you can color this how you wish. Generally, we'll want to do kind of a gradient, and then you're able to do the burnishing technique of your choice. I think what I'll do is the saturation burnishing or color blender. I like using those color blenders, or colorless blenders, I should say. So I'm just kind of staying in this one section, trying not to go out of the lines because we're not erasing these. That's why we used pencil first. <laughs> and I think I might have this kind of fade out to a lighter mulberry purple color in the middle. You'll see how this kind of works. It's kind of like making a value scale. And then it's going to get darker as it goes towards this edge. Here we go. So darken that up. And this just takes some time kind of building up the layers. You can also mix colors. So if you're looking for a particular color and you're just not finding it, feel free to mix colors as well. I'm gonna go back over here and really darken this edge. Make sure it's very dark. Same with this edge. Make sure this edge is also very dark. You'll notice I didn't go all the way down. I'm actually gonna color in a different section here or a different color, I should say. So I didn't go across the whole shape. And I'm gonna lighten it up as I go towards the middle here. So I'm keeping that light. 
if you really struggle with this, I highly recommend practicing a little bit first. So if you rotate your paper here to the back side, practice using your pencil here. Press down really firmly, really hard, and then see if you can lighten it up gradually. So I'm going a little bit lighter now, a little bit lighter now with my pencil. Or if you're having issues with that, move your hand back on your pencil. It's going to exert less pressure. The further you move your hand back, generally, it'll allow you to lighten it up a little bit better. So see how it's already kind of lighting, lightening it up? If I go all the way to the end of the pe pencil, it's really hard for me to press firmly. I have to, <laughs> it forces me to be really light. So sometimes if I'm struggling with that, I'll push my hand back on my pencil on purpose so I can keep it really light until I get to the point where it just kind of blends in with the paper something like that. So this is what we call a value scale. We're just using color instead of a regular pencil. So it's going from dark to light or it could go from light to dark. And you can kind of go back and forth and see, but basically we want to make multiple values. So like here's the darkest, these are the middle values or mid-tones, and then we have highlights here. So you're kind of doing the same thing in this piece. Now this piece could be any which way. I'm going to keep it this way for now. And now I need to do a little bit of burnishing. Now you can do burnishing at the end or as you go along. I like to kind of do it as I go along. Now with this one, I think I'll do burnishing with a white pencil and you'll see how this works. So this is saturation burnishing. We're gonna take the white pencil. It's gonna lighten it up just a little bit. And I'm just gonna use this as a way to kind of fill in any places. It'll kind of smooth out my coloring and also get rid of some of that paper underneath from showing through. So this is a great break. It's a great lesson for students who maybe feel like they're not very good at art or good at drawing. If you can color in, you can do this. If you can hold a pencil, you can do this project. The biggest thing you have to do is believe that you can do it. That's the biggest barrier I've seen at least in students. If they say stuff like, I can't do this, then they're not going to be able to do it. That's just how it works. You're telling your brain you don't know how to do it, so it, you won't be able to do it. But if you try it, just give it a shot, you might be surprised at what you can create and how beautiful it might turn out. All right. Almost there. Looks pretty good. So I just used that to kind of blend it all in. Looks pretty good. Actually looks very 3D, which I am kind of excited about. So you don't necessarily have to do a gradient in every single area, um, but I want to see some throughout the work. So I want to see a few of them here and there. And then maybe I'll choose the same color and put that same color somewhere else or do a different color. So maybe I'll do this purple color inside of this kind of crescent moon bottom space here. So in this case, I think instead of doing a gradient, I'll blend some colors together. So I'm going to have it go from this color to a different color. So I'm going to keep it the same color. I'm not going to like lighten it up. I'm going to have it fade into a different color. Here we go. Now the reason why we keep the paper somewhat small is because you'll notice this takes some time. This is not something that we can finish in a day. Now I'm going to grab a different color. I think what I'll do is I'll grab an orange. So I'm going to have it fade from this mulberry color to this orange. So I'm going to go to orange over here. We fill in that edge. I'm going all the way to the edge of the paper. And I'm going to have it meet up in the middle with this mulberry color. Make sure it's sharpened. Oops. And you'll have to also note that some colors when they mix together might not produce a color that you like. So I like this color, but sometimes when you mix colors together, it'll make kind of an ugly brown or something, um, which isn't a bad color. It just means that, you know, it might be a color you're not looking for. So just be aware of that. You might want to test the colors out on the back here, kind of see how they look when you mix them. So I'm just going to layer them on top of each other so you can see what they look like. So it's almost kind of this maroon color, which I like. I'm just going to go back over with my mulberry and then go back in with my orange. Now, one thing I just noticed, 
I erased this line, but I didn't do a very good job erasing. And you can kind of still see it a little bit. So I have to decide, am I going to just leave it, which I could, or am I maybe going to extend this out and see if I can't cover it up, which I think I might try. I'll try covering that up a little more. And it looks like that darker color does cover it a little more. So sometimes when you run into problems like that, you just have to creatively problem solve. There's not necessarily one answer for everything. Just like life. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to do some more saturation burnish. Actually, instead of that saturation burnishing, I'm going to use the colorless blender. Use this little guy. So this is the clear one. There's nothing there. It just says colorless. I'm going to use this to blend. So again, you'll see it kind of blends out the pencil lines a little bit. It also blends it with the paper a little better. The nice thing about these two, um, doing this project, I mean, is that every single student is going to have a totally different piece. No one should have the same looking piece because we all choose different colors and shapes and lines. Each one's going to have a different feeling, a different look. Some might look really detailed. Others might be less detailed and there's nothing wrong with that. I love these colorless blenders. You just have to make sure you sharpen them. There we go. Get into that paper. We're digging that pigment into the paper. Go all the way to the edge. I'm gonna really fill up that paper. Eventually this whole thing's gonna be filled with color. All right, so that's that. That's the next one. And then I just keep going from there. Keep choosing areas. It's kind of like a puzzle. You're going to choose different areas to focus on. Just take it piece by piece. And if you wish, you can write down the names of the colors that you used in case you're not sure. Um, you can also write down the numbers. Sometimes it's easier to write down numbers instead of the names. And then that way you can come back each class and find the pencils that you need um, and keep working from there. I'm just going to brush that off. You'll notice sometimes it leaves uh, some traces of pencil lead. So just be kind of careful about that. And you're going to just take it from there. So here I'm going to stop. Obviously I'm not done. I'm going to keep working on this, but this at least will get you started on this assignment. So I hope you enjoy it and have some fun with it. And um, if you ever have any questions, you can always ask me for help. Enjoy.